Welcome, it's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined by Rusty Bailey. He is the mayor of the city of Riverside, recently delivered his third state of the city, which I know continues to be sweet for you because you are... Doesn't get any better than being the mayor of your hometown, Brad. Right. You know that about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And, and tell us for our viewers about your hometown status because it goes back a few generations. Yeah, 101 years. We just broke that centennial barrier right. and the family came from Missouri and set up in a, in a farm, fruits and nuts. Right. Farmed Indeed. on Adams and Arlington. And, and so dad uh, followed in his, his father's footsteps as a right. public servant, as a judge. And, right, a judge, right. And, and I followed uh -huh. in his footsteps as a, in the military, public service, and, and um, now I'm the mayor of my hometown. I have to think that each year you've delivered your state of the city, the news has been better. Because when mm -hmm. you were elected in 2014, mm -hmm. things were 12. Tw tw 12, right. You're right, 2012. 12. It's hard to keep everything straight. One of those uh, even years. Yeah, exactly. You know, we were still in slightly difficult times. Yeah. You know, now yeah. we're, we're, we're turning a corner. Yeah. And so give us a sense of the kind of progression of the message yeah. over the last three years. Yeah, the first message, I was in office for basically a month. Right. You know, and so yeah. it, uh, it was a collaborative right. approach. I got a lot of help from uh, you know the, the departments at City Hall and, and people, friends and family, and kind of talked about myself a little bit. But um, second year, I, I said from the beginning, the recession's over, Riverside. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're good to go. Let's start thinking about the future. This year, now, the recession is over, and everybody's over. saying that. Right. Okay, well, what, what's next? What are we doing to keep, keep the momentum? And your points well taken, especially because while we know the Inland Empire had a really difficult time during the recession. Mm -hmm. The city of Riverside actually didn't suffer that much. And, and, and so I think there's this perception that you have all this ground to, to gain, but yet you really weren't starting that low. We have a competitive advantage, or several of them in Riverside, yeah. that the, the rest of Inland Empire doesn't have. Right. Our universities and colleges, exactly. right? Our historic and vibrant downtown that most people didn't have, right? Mm -hmm. Our community spirit, I'll say, and all the, the volunteerism. Um, so that, that kept us afloat and, and definitely uh, that portfolio of jobs and education and government um, uh, helped us weather that storm. I know within your speech you highlighted one element of the economic story of mm -hmm. Riverside. It's something I was not aware and that is the auto center. There's something mm -hmm. unique about mm -hmm. Riverside's auto center. What yeah. is it? We're the city of arts and innovation and we innovated the auto center. Fifty years ago a number of auto dealers came together to look for common space, common ground said, wouldn't it be great if you know, we, we had some land together, adjacent uh, dealers, and, they, and the city found it for them. Literally. Right? So all the auto centers throughout the nation, they can look toward Riverside yes. and know they were the first. That is the truth. That is the truth. And it's going 50 years now uh, of operation of the Riverside Auto Center. Nice big digital sign. Sure. We, we updated and refreshed the, the marketing material. So there's a digital sign out in front of the auto center on the 91 freeway. And you know they, they say that eight percent growth uh, came from just that that sign. So, so things are good. With that innovation behind you and the continued innovation through the decades, how does Riverside grow next? W w tell us about Grow Riverside. Yeah, Grow Riverside is a great uh, you know vision again for our five thousand acres and the historic green belt mm -hmm. that is Prop R and Measure C. The voters in Riverside said we want to to maintain our heritage. Mm -hmm. And it was really focused on the orange belt, the orange trees, mm -hmm. um, but now a lot of right. farmers, sure. it just doesn't pencil out. And so they're looking for the next wave of business and development in that area. Is it um, you know, gonna be mushrooms? Is it going to be uh, nurseries? Nurseries right. are a little bit more, have more right. impact because our people are coming and going. And so we've gotta look at that. But coming in June, we're gonna have the second annual uh, Grove Riverside Conference. Mm. We've got uh, dinner in the in the groves coming up mm -hmm. here, so we're trying to mm -hmm. do fork or farm to fork right, type right. Um, you know programs and sustainable agriculture, and so it's it's really exciting for us. I know that you're the consummate tactician when it comes to growth in the city of Riverside, and so you have been spearheading a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. It's a bit inside baseball, but incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us about recent workshops you've had sure. and how you're looking to really be strategic yeah. in how you march forward. The city council has not come together and produced a strategic plan since 2002, right? We have an annual budget mm -hmm. process. We go through that annually. We have a strategic vision called Seizing Our Destiny that's that you know, right. long-term 20, 30-year 
uh, you right. know, view of, of what we want in the future. And so we got to gap that. And a three to five year strategic plan is what we're looking at. And the council, it's council driven mm -hmm. uh, and especially important timing because our new city manager right. hopefully will be seated in the next month right. or two. We're going through interviews right now as we speak for city attorney and city manager. Right. And it'd be great to be able to pass that plan off to the CEO of our city to, to execute and implement. What was unique about this state of the city address is you had one of your sister cities present, mm -hmm. your newest mm -hmm. sister mm -hmm. city, right. your ninth, Cantho, as I think mm -hmm. how you say it, in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Talk to us about your decision as to why you chose to have a sister city join you. You know, with nine sister cities, we have a very, back to our history and our roots, our in international mm -hmm. Uh, business and international connections, whether it was the Naval Orange coming from Bahia, right. Brazil, right? Frank Miller having all sorts of conferences from, mm -hmm. from people from around the world. Um, and, and this, our ninth and, you know, mm -hmm. sister city, and, and it was controversial and and over that, and the course talk, of it. Yeah, I'd sure. like to talk about that because I had mentioned uh, with one of your colleagues on the city council, I had the honor a few years ago to moderate a panel mm -hmm on Cantho mm -hmm. and whether that city should become right. a sister city. Right. There are those that believe that because the city's in Vietnam, the wounds are still raw from that era. I left that panel discussion feeling really somewhat inspired by those vets that came to talk mm -hmm. about moving on. Of course, I'm not taking a position, but that being why said, not? why not? Well, I'm a neutral journalist, <laughs> but that being said, since the announcement, um, there have been folks, many in the Orange County area, mm -hmm. many of Vietnam, Vietnamese descent, who have been upset mm -hmm. about Riverside's de decision. There were some protests. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that and your sense as to why it struck such a raw nerve. Well, every sister city relationship is a deliberative process. It takes right. years and it's people driven, right? So somebody in the city says, we should have a sister right. city here. And then we go, why, right? right? And we do our due diligence and we take a visit and the International Relations Council manages that sure. and creates a committee. And so our first one with Sendai Japan was back in 1956. And look what happened where right. Sendai and Riverside, I mean, the relationship could not be closer. There you go. Riverside was there for yeah. Sendai yeah. with the earthquake. $650,000 right. we get in. But a, mm -hmm. a soldier in the hospital in Japan in Sendai came back and said, let's, just, let's establish Sister mm -hmm. City. So now that was the first one. The ninth one, Dr. Vian Doan, a right. medical doctor that was a boat person that came from Vietnam that mm -hmm. was probably... Uh, right. you know, chased out of his country. And he is going through this reconciliation process. He's been doing it for 10 years. He's been going back and doing medical, medical missions for mm -hmm. his countrymen in, in his home country. And he wanted to take a step further. So International Relations Council committee comes to the city and the mayor Loveridge at the time, right. whose brother served in Vietnam. Sure. There was emotional ties there, but there was discussions. There was a vetting, there was a debate. And the council ultimately ended up deciding, right. you know, and it was four to three at the council to enter into this relationship back in March of last year, mm -hmm. 2014. So just last week, we signed the agreement right. when they came to Riverside. Yet, you know, there's one city, specifically Westminster, that came out mm -hmm. officially against. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's pretty bold, you know, for one city to kind of indict another city, metaphorically speaking. Were you surprised? I was a little surprised, uh -huh. certainly, but I understand they have emotional ties and memories to their right. home country and, that I don't have, right? right? And they came here because of the right. their, their rights in the Constitution, First Amendment rights of yeah, right. speech and assembly. And, and I'm just wondering, I mean, if you, and I'm just playing it out, if you take that argument to its logical conclusion, one could argue Riverside has a sister city in Germany, in mm -hmm. Erdogan. Mm -hmm. I mean, Japan, we, China. We, yeah, we were right. right. Mexico. A traumatic war right. with Germany. We know what the Germans did to you know mm -hmm. countless mm -hmm. ethnic minorities. Sh should that relationship be put into question? Uh, no, no, not mm -hmm. at all. I think the uh, again back to the goals and the intent of sister cities is people to people contact, where we're looking to the future, common bonds, right. mutual benefit. That means student exchanges, cultural exchanges, business business exchanges, and that that transcends the the history that. Right. Has occurred in, yeah, right? His name is Rusty Bailey. He is the mayor of the beautiful city of Riverside. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California.